Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to The Book Nook. Hey guys, so what I'm going to do today is throw my remote on the floor, first of all, apparently. What I'm going to do today is a quick video wrapping up 2020, not wrapping up 2020 as in a wrap up of everything I read in 2020 because strap in, that would take about 27 hours. What I mean is I have some books that I bought in the latter half of 2020 that I haven't hauled yet and I know it's totally arbitrary and the whole like haul then read them then wrap up thing is bullshit and totally in my head but I don't like having them hanging over my head even though that's all in my head I'm saying head a lot so a quick look at the last few books that I bought towards the end of 2020 and then what I'm going to do is have a quick chat about cozy reading night tonight so first up we have Hiromi Kawakami's People from My Neighbourhood which is a really short little book of short stories this is from the author of the Nakano Thrift Shop and Strange Weather in Tokyo neither of which I don't think I don't think I've got around to reading any of them yet, which is naughty naughty, but this is a collection of little short stories, like really really short stories, and yeah, piqued my interest. Then I picked up a paperback copy of Tanahesi Coates' The Water Dancer, you guys may remember how much I loved Between the World and Me, and I do also have We Were Eight Years in Power on my shelf, which I haven't read yet, but this is fiction by Tanahesi Coates, which I'm really excited to give a go. I'm not sure if I like this cover as much as the US cover. Hmm, maybe 2021 will be the year that I finally get around to talking about book covers like I've been wanging on about for a while. Then I picked up a copy of I Hate Men, which I believe was banned in France and is a collection of short little essays on feminism and I'm very excited to give that a go. Maybe I'll read that tonight, we'll see. Then I picked up a copy of a book that at the time of buying it seemed to be everywhere on like Twitter and Instagram, so clearly advertising works, and that is There's No Such Thing As An Easy Job by Kikoko Tsumura. This is a book about a young woman who wants an easy job and it's sort of looking at all the different jobs she ends up doing and stuff. I've heard it's quite a kind of ploddy... I don't know whether ploddy's the kindest version of the word that I can think of. It's not, but I can't think of a kinder one. Contemplative, slow going book. So I'm not sure I'm quite in the mood for it yet, but I will be. Then finally in 2020, I picked up copies of two books that I've been very excited about. Well, one book that I've been really excited about and the other one I thought, no, you know what? I'm gonna get myself a hard copy. And that is Ali Broche's Hyperbole and a Half, first of all, which is the first one that Ali Broche wrote years and years ago. It was like based on a webcomic that went absolutely nuts. Ali Broche wrote this book about her sort of struggles with mental health and things like that. Then she disappeared for a long while and lots of people from the internet were very worried about her, people from the internet, but we were, we were very worried about her. But then finally, Solutions and Other Problems, her follow-up book has been released. So it's quite heavy and it's very, very chunky, but I got myself a copy because I bloody love it. So those are, I think, all the remaining books that I bought in 2020 that I haven't hauled on here previously, I think. Tell you what, when in Rome, let's just actually wrap up the last few books that I read of 2020. I think there's only four of them, I think. So first up was You Ruin It When You Talk by Sarah Manvelt. This is one that was sent to me by Open Pen. It's a little novella. It's like this fragmented narrative of all the different dates this girl goes on and it's sort of examining internet dating culture and things like that. I found it really funny and quite incisive. I did get a little bit confused sometimes, but I think that was more to do with it's kind of inevitable a little bit with sort of fragmented narratives I think and possibly just me not paying attention but really really enjoyed this one so if you're in the mood for like a little novella that's about sort of modern life, dating culture, that sort of thing, definitely recommend this one. Then I read Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Lee Bardugo is someone whose work I have never read before, famous for Six of Crows, is that the, the Grisha verse I think I want to say? And another series of books that I've totally forgotten and fallen out of my head but never mind. Never read any Lee Bardugo before and I thought you know what I want to give her writing a taste before I go into like another series so I thought I would try this one as I'd heard loads about it on the old internet. And it's about Alex Galaxy Stern who is part of a kind of secret society that polices the secret societies in America at a university that I've forgotten which one it was. I don't know, they're all the same. I started this one pre November. I started it at the very end of... Bloody hell, what month comes before November? October, that's the one. I started it at the end of October and then decided I wanted to go full November. Didn't time it very well. So I picked this up at the beginning of December. It took me a little while to get back into it. But once I did, really, really enjoyed it. A lot going on and I kind of wish there was another one, I think. And then the last two books of 2020 that I read, which as I've put myself in the middle, I will put up one either side of me. And that is Gideon the Ninth and Harrow the Ninth. Have I got them the right way around? I don't know, I flipped it. Whichever way round. Gideon the Ninth is the first one, Harrow the Ninth is the second one. The tagline for these two that I'd mainly sort of heard about and was sold on was lesbian space necromancers. Pretty dope. Maybe a little bit lighter on one of those three things than I would have liked, but these books were really good. They took a little while to get into, and I think, particularly with Gideon the Ninth, I just it just took a while for stuff to happen, but then once stuff started happening, boy did it keep on happening. 
and I wasn't sure if I was really enjoying it and then I realised that the whole time I was at work I was waiting for my next lunch break so that I could carry on reading it so obviously I was. It's been a while since the book has grabbed me to that point that I can't, when I finish reading it or when I stop reading I can't wait till I can read it again. So these two books really really enjoyed, there's a third one coming in the series but I don't think it's coming until like 2022 or something and that's Electo the Ninth. So those are the books that I read in 2020, that's 2020 done, wrapped up, goodbye 2020, fuck you! If, again, when in Rome we're talking my favourite books of 2020, or favourite ones that I read in 2020, I would have to say Priory of the Orange Tree, Four Deaths, probably In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Mercado as well, I really love that one. I'm just looking at what I actually read because everything feels like a lifetime ago. I really really enjoyed all the Earthsea books so I'm kind of gonna lump them in together. They were definitely a favourite and they sort of got me through the summer. Song of Achilles because it made me cry like an absolute baby. Pet by Aquake Amizi, I loved that one. The Deep by River Solomon. What else? Uh, I actually really enjoyed, and I feel like this is a guilty pleasure, but I feel I feel like I need to qualify it loads, but I actually really enjoyed Untamed by Glennon Doyle, but I will talk about that in another video. Uh, Flames by Robbie Arnott as well was 100% up there. And yeah, you know what? Probably Gideon and Harrow. Right, so that is 2020 tied up with a little bow. Actually, I think I'd rather tie it up with a noose. Right, moving on, it is Cozy Reading Night tonight, lovely Lauren at Lauren and the Books is doing Lockdown 3.0 Cozy Reading Nights every other Friday, starting tonight, Friday the 15th, 7 till 10, and I'm going to be joining in. Previously in Lockdown 2 and the kind of nebulous times in between, I hadn't been able to join in with Cozy Reading Night because it clashed with D&D, but I'm now doing some alternating st other stuff, I, I, you don't need to know my calendar, basically I'm in. In terms of what to read tonight, I've already got my snacks sorted, pizza, thank you very much. I always struggle more than I need to with what to read on Cozy Reading Night. I can never quite decide whether I want to use it as an opportunity to sit and really read like one novel full stop for like three hours or whether, because particularly at the moment, like being locked down, I get those opportunities, whether I want to use it as a dedicated time to read things like graphic novels. So I think what I'm going to do, and I've got a kind of stack here of books that I'm going to choose from tonight, not that I have to read or not that I, you know, have to tick off, but that I will probably choose from. First up is Flake by Matthew Dooley. I mentioned I got this one for Christmas, so I'm going to sit and read that one. That one feels like a definite. Then some more graphic novels, because I do quite like spending cozy reading night reading graphic novels. I've done it previously and it's worked quite well. I haven't hauled these yet, but who cares? And that is Lumberjanes 13 and 14 and Giant Days 13 and 14. In terms of Giant Days, these are the last two, and I feel very emotion. Emotion. So yeah, I think I'll spend some time with them. They're two of my sort of favourite graphic novel series, particularly Giant Days, and they're just a nice cosy thing to sit and read. If I have time, I may also read this graphic novel, which I'm really, really excited about. Again, not hauled it yet. Very excited about this one. Can't believe I didn't discover it before. Heathen. It's a graphic novel about Vikings, yo. There's like a whole series of these, so <laughs> bye bye money. So I'm toying with maybe including that one tonight, or whether I just do me and next cosy reading night have a nice Norse cosy reading night. We'll see. Other than graphic novels, I have also got a stack of some like fantasy novels here that I'm thinking of starting because I'm feeling fantasy at the moment. I don't know whether it's just because of the way the world is. I'm feeling fantasy novels, but some of them are chunksters or first in a series and I'm not sure if I'm there. And so I think what I am going to do is Sheridan Lafanu's Camilla, which I never got around to doing before. Carmilla, sorry, apologies, which I never got around to reading at Halloween. Uh, lesbian vampires, nice and short. I think that's done. Will you guys be joining in with Cozy Reading tonight or any other Cozy Reading night? I am very much looking forward to it. As I say, the last couple I haven't been able to do and the last one I did, I was in a weird headspace and couldn't really get into it. So I'm very much looking forward to just spending some time with some books. I keep doing this thing lately where I keep putting off making a video, but then when I do it, I'm actually really enjoying it and forgetting how much I enjoy doing it when I'm not doing it. So I just need to, you know, snap out of it. But I've rolled like three videos into one now and it's going to be far too long and I'm going to hate myself a little bit, but that's just the way it goes. Once again, I hope you're all keeping safe and well and staying at home where you can and have a lovely cozy reading night, have a lovely week, have a lovely life and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.